every once in a while, I'll spend a few minutes visiting the channels of my YouTube subscribers. And when I last did this, I was really surprised by how few teachers are taking advantage of one of the most useful features of YouTube. Hi, my name is John Sowash and I help teachers use the web to organize their classroom and design better lessons. Today, I want to introduce you to YouTube playlists. Like I said, I was really surprised by how few teachers are taking advantage of this incredibly helpful, very useful feature available on YouTube. Here's the scenario. You know that students love video. Students love seeing and watching videos, especially from YouTube. But how do you manage and organize those videos so that when you're ready to share them, you know where they are? The answer is the YouTube playlist. They're super easy to set up and they're gonna help you find exactly the right video and have it ready so that you can share it with your students in a variety of ways. Let's take a look and set up a channel and create some playlists. Now the first thing you have to do is actually create a channel. A lot of you may have a channel already, but if you don't, all you have to do is go to youtube.com, look up in the top right corner, you should see your profile picture up there, your Google account, and click on it. Uh, you'll either see this button where it says your channel, which means you have one, or it'll say create channel. It takes like two seconds. You type in your name and you're good to go. Just do that one time. Now, creating a channel doesn't like make some kind of commitment. You don't have to upload videos. You don't have to have aspirations to be a YouTube celebrity. Creating a channel just allows you to get manage and organize videos that you like. So go ahead and create your channel. I'm going to click on uh, my channel. And it's going to come here. It's totally empty. Again, you don't have to upload videos if you don't want to. Let's take a look at setting up a playlist. What we're going to do is we're going to visit what's called the YouTube Studio. Um, there's a couple ways you can do that. Right now, I'm just going to click this Manage Videos uh, button up in the top right. And that'll take me to the YouTube Studio in a separate tab. Now, I spend a lot of time in the YouTube studio. I'm always uploading videos, writing descriptions, answering comments, doing all that stuff. I do that here. But we are just going to focus on one thing. We're going to be looking at this awesome button over here on the left that says playlist. A playlist allows you to organize videos created by other people into a collection that you can then share with your students or just have for future reference. So I'm going to go ahead and click on playlist. I already have a few set up. And you can go ahead and click the new playlist button over on the right side of your screen and create a playlist. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions for how to get started. I taught high school biology and I had a nine unit course. It took me nine units over the course of the school year. And I ended up creating a different playlist for every unit that I would teach. Um, those playlists were unlisted. No one else could see them. They're really just for my benefit. But anytime I would find a video, sometimes accidentally, that really worked well with something that I would be teaching in the future, I would just throw it into that playlist. And eventually, when I get to that unit, I'd have a list of videos available to add to my lessons, put in a Google form, add to a Google slide presentation, show at the beginning of class, post to Google Classroom, however you share videos with your students. You can see some of them here. So we have a dissection unit at the end of the year in the spring. I've got all my lab videos in there, uh, some microorganisms organism videos. It's always a difficult concept for students. Cell biology, you know, bringing microscopic things to life so students can, uh, you know, visualize them. Another way that you can use playlists is to create a playlist for yourself with teaching tips or ideas. That's what I do on this channel. Um, I create all kinds of videos to help teachers use technology in useful ways. And there's lots of other teachers who do the same thing. When you stumble upon one of those videos, you just throw it right into that playlist and you'll have easy access to it in the future. Set up as many playlists as you like on this page. Now, when you create the playlist, they're going to be empty. There's nothing in there. But we can add videos to that playlist super, super easily. To do that, we're just going to go to YouTube. So I'm going to move over to my other tab here. This is YouTube. And we're going to search for a video. So I'm, I'm going to find another video for uh, my dissection playlist. Let's do crayfish this time. Crayfish dissection. We'll find a video here. This one looks good. And there's many different ways that you can add this video to the playlist. Um, the way that I typically do it is right underneath the video where you see thumbs up and thumbs down button. Uh, you'll also see the save button. 
clicking down that save button will display all of your playlists and there you go that video is now um, added to that dissection playlist. Super easy to do, and you can be browsing on your phone, your laptop, wherever you are, and you stumble upon a video, throw it into a playlist, uh, and you're good to go. The last thing I wanna show you is some things that you can do with your playlist once you have them created. I'm gonna go back to the YouTube Creator Studio. Now, just as a reminder, there's a couple easy ways to get back here. This is where you manage your playlist, create new ones, delete them, look at the videos in the playlist. Um, easiest way to get there is to just click your profile picture in the top right corner of YouTube, and you will see right at the top um, it'll say your channel or uh, creator studio, and that'll get you into uh, where you can mo modify your playlist. Let's go ahead and click on um, this lesson idea playlist. Um, I'm going to click the pencil icon. You saw me do that. And so this allows me to see the videos that are on that playlist. I can rearrange them if I wish, uh, remove them. Uh, if, you know, sometimes videos get taken down off YouTube. They're no longer available, so you can remove old videos uh, as you want. Two cool things that you can do with your playlist. First, you can share the entire playlist with your students. So perhaps you teach uh, language arts and you've created a series of grammar videos, put those into a playlist. You can share the entire playlist with your students, click the little arrow button, copy that, post that into Google Classroom. The neat thing, let me go ahead and open it up, this is what your students are going to see. They're gonna see the playlist and all of the videos um, in it and they just kind of play one after the other. So it's a way that you can kind of curate their YouTube experience uh, instead of some random YouTube video playing which may not be uh, appropriate or academically focused, the next video in your playlist uh, will uh, start playing right after one ends. So that's idea number one, share an entire playlist. You can post those in a Google Classroom, link to them in a Google document, drop them into a Google Meet session if you're teaching virtually. Idea number two is a lot of fun because you can collaborate on playlists. I'm gonna go to the shish kebab. Those are the three little dots. It's like the snowman fell over. Uh, click the shish kebab and you'll see collaborate. And I can enable collaboration on this playlist, which means that other people can add to it as well. Now, it's not just open to anyone. You have to specifically invite people to contribute to your playlist. So the idea is, you know, if I teach biology in a large district, I could share this dissection playlist with, you know, many other biology teachers, and we could all add our favorite videos to this playlist, and it becomes even better. Elementary teachers, you can share a playlist with your grade level team, say, hey, let's collect the best videos on telling time, on counting money, on shapes, colors, like whatever you're studying, and collectively, your minds will uh, create an even better playlist than one of you could do individually. Now for uh, high school, middle school uh, classes, potentially you could even create a playlist and invite your students to go out and find the best videos on a particular topic. You know, crowdsource um, finding those videos. YouTube's a big place. The more people that look, the more likely you are to find uh, great videos. You are the owner of the playlist. Only people you invite can contribute to the playlist. You would have to copy that link and either email it to them, post in Google Classroom so they have that link and they'd be able to uh, share videos there as well. I hope that you will begin using more YouTube in your classroom. Now you've got these videos in your playlist. The next question is, what do you do with them? Check out this next video on seven different ways that you can incorporate YouTube videos into your next lesson.